Hi guys, it's Davin here at Brewbits.com. Behind the camera, as usual, we've got James. Say hello, James. I had a request the other day from one of our regular recipe users um, who said in their email that they like apple and blackberry crumble. And is there possibly a recipe for this? Well, got me thinking. Well, I did the banana and, no, the rhubarb and custard one. And I thought, if I can do rhubarb and custard, I'm pretty sure I can do apple and blackberry crumble wine. So, if you want to make apple and blackberry crumble wine, what are you going to need? Here, I have got two pounds of lovely, freshly picked blackberries that have been washed. I've got two and a half pounds of some various different apples that I've picked, um, and we're going to core those. I've got two and a half pounds of sugar, and this is gonna be the main part that's gonna do the fermenting for us. Um, what I'm gonna use for the fermentation is a dessert high alcohol yeast, and I'm also gonna add a small amount of malic acid to the mix as well. That we're gonna get fermenting up, and so that we get that kind of crumble sort of flavor going on, um, I'm gonna try and get a usually unwanted flavor out of our yeast, which is called diacetyl. Um, diacetyl tends to make um, kind of flavors of toffee or buttery. It also adds to a bit of um, mouthfeel in the mouth that makes it taste uh, a bit pastry-like. So we're gonna try and get that out of that yeast. Um, but what we're also going to do once we finish fermenting is we're going to add this lovely white powder. This lovely white powder, it looks a little bit like milk powder and that's because it kind of is. It's the sugar from milk powder, it's called lactose and that's going to make it lovely and creamy. And what we're also going to do is because you always have uh, custard with your apple and blackberry crumble, so we're going to use some vanilla essence to get that going. Couple of other things we're gonna need. We're gonna need some Camden tablets and some fermentation stopper. And we're also going to be clearing it with a finings. And here I'm using VinClear wine finings. And then we need a few bits and bobs to actually ferment it with. So of course we need our fermenting buckets. We're gonna need a demijohn. We're gonna need a trial jar to go with our hydrometer and our thermometer for keeping temperature. And we're gonna need a grater so we can grate our apples and a potato masher so we can mash our blackberries. Once you've got all that together, I think we should get brewing. So I've got a mixture of a few different apples here. This is a uh, Kingston Black cider apple that I grow in the garden. And these are really good. Uh, then we've got uh, this little beauty, that's a Bramley. It's a little small Bramley, but I thought it's got that all that lovely acid in there that you would associate with a um, an apple crumble, so apple and black would be crumble. And here, I think these are a little russet um, or something along those lines with a really rough, almost brown skin, really lovely and flavorful way. So I'm just using a mix of apples. You can use whatever apples you've got if you want to use Golden Delicious, use Golden Delicious, but it doesn't really matter as long as we've got apples. Ah, so all you have to do is grate the apples. Oh, it takes a couple of moments. And this allows us to get as much flavor out as the apples as possible. So we've now got our bowl of grated apples. I know they've gone a bit brown and oxidized. That's not a really bad thing to worry about. The next thing is we're going to be getting on to our blackberries. And into the fermenting bucket they go. And I've already sterilized the fermenting bucket. Now, you can get in there with your hands and get going on it. But if you do, you're going to end up with bright red hands. So come on in, I don't know if you can see this, James. Just basically get yourself a potato masher and get in there and start squishing them up. Now, whilst you're squishing them up, back to me a second, James, because in a moment we're going to need some boiling water. 
So it's very easy right now, whilst you're doing the mashing up, save a bit of time, put the kettle on. You'll need six pints of boiling water in total. <laughs> Once you've got all your blackberries mushed up, and be careful, it does, you do get covered. Right, in goes the apples. So this is my first three pints of boiling water. Good stir. And this is the second lot of three pints. So that's taken me up to six pints of boiling water. Now, this is enough to make um, a gallon, six bottles of wine. Um, but I'm only adding six pints of boiling water because there's so much juice already in the blackberries and in the apples, and we'll extract that later. And that will add up the extra quantity to make up our, our full gallon. Right, so we've also got sugar here. Here I'm using granulated supermarket sugar. Um, I'm using all granulated sugar in this one and that will add a residual sweetness to the finished wine because of course this is not a normal wine. This is apple and blackberry crumble wine. So we want it to be quite sweet. So stir all that sugar in and keep going until it's fully dissolved and you'll know if it's fully dissolved because there'll be no more scratchy bits at the bottom of it. If you can hear that, you can definitely feel it. It doesn't take long. Right, okay. We're now going to put the lid on this. Probably down because we need this to cool down to uh, about 24 degrees C. Um, and that's then when we can start adding some other ingredients and get this fermented. So pop this if you can somewhere cool and leave it for a few hours until it gets down to 24 degrees Celsius. It's taken a while for our liquid to get down to our desired temperature of 24 degrees. And I've used my thermometer to double check that. And I've taken a sample in my trial jar and it's coming out at 1.088. So once this ferments down to dryness, we're gonna be looking at a percentage of about 13 and 14%. Now, there are a couple of things that we need to add. Because we're using fruits and we've used some boiling water, over here, James, we're gonna to need to add some pectolase. Well, I forgot to tell you about this at the beginning. And pectolase is gonna do two things. Uh, firstly, it's going to break down the pectin, and the pectin is great for setting, setting things like jam, but it's bad for wine because it will create a haze in the finished wine. And pectinase basically breaks down that pectin and stops that haze in the finished wine. Secondly, what it does is it also breaks down the cell walls, and it helps those cell walls break, and as they do, they release more of their lovely juices and their colors into the wine. So pectolase does two things, breaks down the pectin and adds extra color and also extracts that extra flavor as well. Now, I'm also gonna add uh, a little bit of malic acid. Now, you would normally add about 10 grams per uh, gallon, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna add about a quarter of a, I'm sorry, about half a teaspoon and half a teaspoon is uh, gonna be about um, two and a half grams of malic acid for the whole batch. And that's gonna add a little bit of extra bite and it's gonna help the apples in there to bring out that apple-y flavor because malic acid, malus, comes from apples. And then lastly, I'm gonna add our yeast. And here I'm using uh, the Young's Dessert High Alcohol Yeast just because it's quite a good wine, uh, quite a good yeast, and it's gonna help ferment this out very, very quickly. <clears throat> now you may notice I've not added, not added any yeast nutrients, uh, and there's a very good reason for that. Um, we want this yeast to create um, diacetyl. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pop the lid on lightly. This is gonna go into my warm cupboard at 24 degrees C. 
and it's going to take about five-ish days to ferment and we want to really really fast ferment on that. Um, without the yeast nutrient this is going to stress the yeast and this is going to potentially make them cause uh, create um, their own nutrient and that own, their own nutrient basically becomes diacetyl and diacetyl has got what's going to give us that lovely pastry um, flavours um, and mouthfeel to help our apple and crumble and that's the major part so the diacetyl here is going to help create the crumble part of it so into my warm cupboard 24 degrees c and fingers crossed it's going to take about five days it's been seven days since we started fermenting our apple and blackberry crumble wine. Come on in James and have a look at this. Now I know I originally said four days, but after four days I checked it and it still hadn't finished fermenting. And at the top here we had lots and lots and lots of um, apple gratings and bits of blackberry. And a lot of that's now subsided. And so I've taken another reading with our hydrometer here. Oh, you probably can't see that because it's gone round. Ooh. It is actually coming out at 0.996. Um, so it's telling me we're ready to move on to the next stage. So let's keep this up on there for a moment. So down here, I have got my second brewing bucket and I've also got um, a mashing and sparging bag because I find this very, very useful because it's got two different size meshes. And all I'm gonna do is pop that over the top like so. And it sits down in there quite nicely. And this one, we're now going to pour it, not from a very high height, try and not get any splashes because this stuff goes everywhere. And then all go in, everything totally in. Right, nothing left, look. And all we're going to do now is lift this up start giving it a squeeze because in that pulp there is lots and lots and lots of lovely juice and wine as it is now and we want to get most of this back and it takes a little bit of time to do it and you'll notice if you try and do it too fast you end up with lots and lots and lots of um, wine squirting everywhere so once you've got it to a nice bag go to the bottom to gently squeeze all I'm doing at the bottom is that You'll notice it starts flowing through quite quickly rather than trying to squeeze the whole bag out and very, very quickly. Ooh, that got my leg. Very, very quickly, you are left with a bag of pulp. And this is all apples and all the blackberries. Oh, goodness. Here you go, James. Come on, have a look at this. You can see. There's not much left now. Eh? We've got all our wine in the bottom bucket. So all our lovely wine in the trial jar can go back in to our new bucket. But before we do that, I thought it'd be a bit sneaky. Take a taster. It smells good. That's actually worked really well. Because of the, the fast ferment with no yeast nutrient, you can definitely taste the, the butteriness coming through. But the good thing about this is because of that little, little bit of malic acid we had at the beginning, what that's done is that's given you that little tart sharpness. You know when, when you eat into an apple and blackberry crumble and it's like, Ooh, that's a little bit sharp, need some more sugar. Or in this case, it's gonna need custard. It's actually... That is actually smack on, that is lovely. Right, I'm gonna pour that back in. Sorry, James, doesn't get a taste of this time. I'll leave that for you. Okay, right, so what are we doing now? Uh, well, in here is a load of live yeast still willing to munch on anything we put in there so we're going to need to kill that off and that is where this little pot comes in and this is a pot of fermentation stopper um, it's a 
preservative and it's used in lots and lots and lots of foods all over the place. Now we've only got a gallon here so we don't need very much at all. We only need about half a teaspoon. So I'm going to sprinkle this in. Now at the same time as the fermentation stoppers working, I'm going to add um, some uh, Camden tablet, a crushed Camden tablet. So a crushed Camden tablet, what this is going to do is that's going to help keep that um, lovely, fantastic color. Uh, so it's going to help stop it from oxidizing. I've got two teaspoons here. I'll put it on then and then you can crush to your heart's content. Nice and crushed. And that goes in. So as I say, it's going to do a few things. Um, it's going to give us a protective barrier of sulfur dioxide over top of the wine. That's going to stop any um, bacteria and anything like that getting into it. It's also going to help the fermentation stopper because the Camden tablets work on the uh, yeast that's in there and help stop them from multiplying and then the fermentation stopper then can really get to go. Okay, so now we've added those in, I need to find my spoon and stir it in. So I'll be back in a second. There we go. So, this is going to kill the yeast that's currently in there. But there's also something else in here right now, and I could taste it in my taster. And this is carbon dioxide. There's carbon dioxide, as it was all bubbling away, the carbon dioxide dissolved um, some of it bubbled away into the atmosphere, some of it actually dissolved into the wine. So we need to knock this out. So come on in, James. So to knock this out, we need to get our spoon right down to the bottom and give it a good stirring and a good knocking out. And you can see that it's fizzing. So this is just like if you'd open a, a can of Coke um, and you get all the bubbles, like when you pour it, all the bubbles come out. This is exactly the same. There's not much in here. Okay, something we're not trying to do is we're not trying to stir air into it. So once we've knocked some carbon dioxide out, what happens is you create a little layer of it in here and that helps protect the wine as well. Okay. I'm gonna pop the lid back on, not currently, this time, because we need to protect this, what's going on in here. Now we need to come back to this about uh, three times a day over the next two days. And we need to give it a good vigorous stir in each of those three times uh, over the next two days. And that's going to knock any carbon dioxide out and it's going to make sure that the fermentation stopper and the Camden tablets do their job and kill the yeast. So this now can just sit on a side of a um, countertop somewhere, don't disturb it, uh, apart from when you're taking the lid off and giving it a good stir and then pop the lid back on. And I'll see you back here a couple of days time. It's been 48 hours since we added our Camden tablet and our stabilizer, our potassium uh, sorbates or fermentation stopper. Come on in and have a look at this, James. Because I've been stirring it as well over the last couple of days, giving it a good vigorous stirring. And you can see it already started to clear because uh, that's showing us most of the carbon dioxide knocked out. And one final stirring doesn't hurt. Right, so is that going to stay there? Yes, it is. Right, back to me a second, James. Because I'm going to use um, a two-stage finings on this. And usually the two-stage finings work the quickest. And so here I'm using uh, a, a, some findings called Clear It. And in here you've got two bottles. One says A and one says B. Now, I've got quite a lot of heavy sediment in here, so because of that, I'm gonna to need to use, uh, according to the instructions, three mils of A. And the way I'm gonna do it, is I'm gonna use my little tiny syringe, which, of course, I've sterilized. And that's two mil. You just about to see the mil line. And three mil goes in. Top goes on of A, and we give this a good stirring. Ooh, trying not to splash it, but making sure it's all in there. Lovely, I'm going to leave the spoon in here. 
so I don't have to uh, sterilize it again. Put the lid on, pop it to one side, and I'm gonna leave this for one hour to start doing its thing. So it's been an hour since we added our three mil of A. So now I'm gonna add three mil of B. And the way these work is that all that sediment in our wine is positively charged. And all the um, particles in here are negatively charged. And what happens is the positives and negatives attract and they become big clumps. And as they become bigger and bigger and bigger clumps, they get too heavy to stay floating around in the wine. And so they drop to the bottom. So that just needs a good stir. And come on, have a little quick look at this, James. Because in about 24 to 48 hours, that is gonna clear beautifully. Now, I've got just over a gallon in here, uh, perhaps a little bit more, I've been a bit lucky with my levels. And so I'm gonna leave it in my bucket now to clear for the next 48 hours, and I'm gonna put it um, over the other side of the kitchen, and I'm gonna leave it somewhere where I'm not gonna disturb it for the 48 hours. If you want to, what you can do is you can siphon it using a sterilized siphon into something like a demijohn, and you can actually physically watch it clear. But for me, for now, I'm going to leave it in my fermenting bucket, in this bucket to um, clear, and we'll come back to it in about 48 hours, and fingers crossed, it'll be beautiful and clear. It's been 48 hours since we've added our findings. They've done the magic job of clearing our wine. I know you can't really see it very well in a bucket, but I can see my finger marks coming through over the side over there. If you've done it in a demi job, then you'll see it's lovely and clear. So what we need to do is we need to siphon it off the sediment in that bucket into a new clean sterilized bucket. So I've got a simple siphon and in that goes, quicks up and let it flow. Now, if you have a quick look in here now, James, now you can see how really clear this is because you can see the siphon through it. Right, this is gonna take me a couple of moments to siphon this through. You may need to tilt your bucket ever so slightly so that, come on up in here, James, and have a quick look. So it means that you can get as much wine out of there as possible and try and leave all that sediment behind. We're now gonna be adding the lactose. And I've got here 250 grams of lactose. I've got my saucepan. And I've got two jugs, both with 200 ml of wine in. And I've also taken a little sample just so I can try it. So, on the heat goes, and my first 200 ml of wine is going into the saucepan. And then we're gonna gently add the lactose powder. And this is a bit like using icing sugar. It does dissolve. Give it a little bit of a stir, and suddenly it all disappears. And yes, I know it's turning milky, because lactose comes from milk. But something magical will happen very, very soon. I know you don't think it's all going to go in, but trust me, it does. It goes quite thick. It's like you're adding loads and loads of icing sugar to, to water. Because, of course, so I don't know if you can see there is steam coming off, but don't be fooled. This is not water steam, this is alcohol steam. So keep your nose away from it. Otherwise you might get a shot of alcohol up the nose, which can be a little bit on the warm side. And you'll feel it start to go. It starts to stop being gritty and starts to become thinner and less thick. You can see the colours changing from what was a blancmange colour. Lovely, gorgeous and pink blancmange. And you see it's starting to gradually change. And it's 
starting to come to the boil, so keep stirring. I'm going to turn down my heat a little bit, but we're going to keep stirring. And you'll notice, get this, I'm perfectly clear. All the milkiness disappears in the blink of an eye. So, that's all gone. I'm going to gently add the other 200 ml of wine back to it. That's going to help cool it down. And it's also going to help now when we pour this into our wine in here and do it nice and slowly. Get it moving in the bucket first of all. Be careful so you don't scold yourself as this is very, very, very hot sugar liquid. Give that a good stir in, make sure it's all in there and dissolved. Now back to me a second, James. So that now has added all of our lovely creamy textures. It's also added a sweetness to it because at the moment, um, before we added it, it's still a little bit sharp and a little bit tangy. So that's gonna smooth it out, it's gonna round it out. So, gonna leave that a couple of minutes just to relax. And here I am using a um, whole bottle of uh, Madagascan vanilla extract. We've done experiments with these in the past with our rhubarb and custard wine. And I can tell you that whole bottle, which is uh, 40 mils, it's gonna add a huge difference to this wine. And with, back to me a second, James. So with the creaminess that the lactose has added and with the vanilla, that's now our custard, which is gonna absolutely beautifully finish off this wine. Right, I'm going to pop the lid back on and let it rest whilst I sterilise my bottles. So I've sterilised my bottles and also I've cleaned out and I've sterilised my siphon again. I've got a bucket clip here which makes life a little bit easier because the siphon tube can now simply slide down. And I'm going to simply now take my bottles with a good suck and fill them up. Now if you can, try and run the wine down the outside of the bottle rather than letting it splash in the bottle. It'll prevent any infection. And we're going to take it up just to the, the bottom of the neck so that we can fit a cork in. Back to me a second, James, because that's perfect. Oh, I'm gonna finish doing the other bottles now. I've managed to get six and a half bottles out of our recipe, which is great. So um, that's for me a little bit later. I'm gonna pop that in the fridge. In my saucepan here, come on in James and have a look. I've got a little bit of sodium metabisulfate solution that I've put on the hob, brought just shy of the boil, dropped my corks in. That's gonna do two things. That's gonna sterilize the corks, but it's also gonna help the process of getting them in the bottle. So, I've got my trusty three-handled corker here. That goes in, clips on like that. And it's a simple job now, squeezing it down in. Just got the six to do. So I thought we would have a sneaky taste. Really, really, almost like a 
Wow, I wasn't expecting that at all. So, you've got the lovely brambles, the blackberries even, and you've got all those apples coming through. You've got the pastry from the diacetyl where we stress the yeast. Uh, that's coming through as well, and that's given us this pastry kind of almost slightly oily texture to the wine. Don't let that put you off though, because that's exactly what we want. That gives you that real crumble feel. And then we've got the smooth silkiness coming through from the lactose, the sweetness coming through from the lactose, and that's all hit off by that good shot of vanilla that we've put in at the end. And that really is blackberry and apple crumble with custard in a glass of wine. Now, back to me a second, James, because I know it's not absolutely perfect yet. Um, it's still really, really fresh. It's going to need a little bit of time for all the flavours to mingle and settle down. So now I've finished bottling my six bottles. They need to be stood up for 24 hours to allow the corks to set. Put a nice label on them, perhaps even finish them off with a nice shrink cap on the top. And then they need to be led down and stored somewhere nice and cool. I'm going to give mine at least three months. So now I'm going to be looking at about Christmas to open these up. And I think that's going to go amazingly well on Christmas Day. From initial tastings from this, I think this now might be my favourite one. So, have a go. Have a go at making um, apple bramble, uh, <laughs> apple bramble and custard wine. And then write in the comments down below and let me know how yours turned out and if you enjoy it as much as I do. Anyway, for now, cheers and happy brewing.